So um, I had to really stop and think about this tag. I thought this was going to be a really easy tag to do. And Cleo tagged me and a few other people and everybody in the world too, I'm sure. But um, I thought this was going to be easy. It is not easy for me to do this tag. I don't know if it's just because it's nostalgic or because I had to really just start in my memory and then work to a particular spot. And when I got to it, I realized this is the one. This is the one that I absolutely love. And I have a huge collection of fragrance. Um, well, not huge. I mean, you, some people collect fragrances, you know, like like they literally have cabinets and, and, you know, refrigerators full of fragrances. This is like normal to them. I actually know a girl who has a refrigerator that she just keeps for her fragrances. But anyway, I have a modest collection of, of different fragrances. And I, ever since, ever since the beginning the beginning of time with this fragrance which really is from another world another time I always come back to it and I have three different variations of it that I'm going to show you um, the first time I knew I was in love with a fragrance was this one and this is it right here it's called Jean Tu and it's a drugstore because you know Okay, now we got to go back. We got to go back to the to the 70s, okay? When I was a kid. And we have to go back and you have to realize there was a there was a lot going on then and there was a huge revolution in scent going on then. And there was uh, an earthiness going on along with sort of a uh, emancipation type of a feel to it, you know, and uh, a freshness vibe. Remember Earth Day started um, I think in 1970. Um, and it's sort of that whole theme carried on. There were a lot of sporty fragrances like Alliage by Estee Lauder that came out. And this fragrance, Jean Tu, came out in 1976. I wrote down a few things about it, so we'll get right to it. Let me show you um, this again. Uh, it's from the House of Revlon, 1976. It's a floral green fragrance. The thing I love about this is the complexity of it. You do not get this anymore, really. Um, in the drugstore. I don't even know in niche if you can find anything quite like what I'm going to read to you about the notes right now. You can argue with me if you like. Here we go. The top notes are gardenia, bergamot, chamomile, cypress, and rose. The middle notes mimosa, tuberose, ylang ylang, sage, and geranium. Yeah, I said sage. This is really cool. Um, the base has musk, benzoin, oak moss, vetiver, and patchouli. Now, this particular bottle I got, I think, off of eBay. And so this is a modern, um, updated version of this. And you can see I'm almost out of it. You can see there's the, the flower on the bottle, and it just says cologne spray. I have a vintage, a little vintage bottle of it. Ooh, sorry. <laughs> and this is a very different presentation in the bottle, and the the um, juice is much darker. This is um, a little bit different in the vintage. It is better in the vintage. You can get your hands on it. Go for that. And as I break every no, I didn't break it. Um, the vintage is actually a complete symphony of florals. Okay. Um, when you get to the uh, oak mossy. Uh, earthiness in the base it, it's blended better obviously in the vintage the uh, more uh, updated version of it oh, what did I write down here it's a little bit um, more uh, uh, or I guess if you pick up the oak moss a little bit more it's a little bit more earthy in this particular version of it it's very unique there's nothing resinous or animalic or fruity about it. It's a true beautiful floral. It really, really is. With um, it's 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 marketed as an outdoorsy kind of a scent, and the original um, marketing had a girl riding a horse. You know, uh, it's just so beautiful. I can't. Um, it's so balanced, and it's very complex as you can tell by the uh, composition of it and you have to let it develop even if you buy the drugstore you have to let it develop on your skin because it's going to go through everything top middle and base before you decide whether you like it or not it's a 70s 
it does have a little touch of the green in it. Um, it definitely a product of the 70s. It's a true love. I also have another version of it. This is a vintage bottle and it's Lotus de Nuit. And I think there was also another version of this that came out. But um, it's just so, it's so beautiful. I actually had one man stop and look me in the eye and say, you smell so good, I would follow you anywhere. And I was wearing the Jean Tu. No one's ever said that to me about um, even the most expensive <laughs> fragrances that I have. So I really love this. This would be my first true love, and it, it remains steadfast. I love this. So even if you're at the drugstore, or if you want to, you can blind buy this. It's worth it because you're going to see the complexity and the balance of this fragrance. Oh, it's beautiful. It is just beautiful. Um, I, you see, I'm like enraptured by the whole idea of even talking about this fragrance. And I know I'm not the only one that feels that way about this. And um, I'm, I'm really not a fragrance snob at all. Like, I'll try niche, I'll try designer, I'll try drugstore. I've done reviews on drugstore fragrances and I wear all of them. I have beautiful Chanel's that I wear. But I would probably choose this over them, it, given I, any day of the week, I, I could pick this out. As you can see, I use uh, tons of it. So, and the vintage is so smooth. It's just, oh, it's just beautiful. So to recap, this is John Tube from the House of Revlon, 1976. So I really fell in love. You know, this was a good perfume to fall in love with. If you're gonna fall in love, this is nice. This has got a lot of interesting ingredients to like in here mm-hmm yeah so anyway thanks for um tagging me cleo this is so cool uh thanks for watching bye bye